This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something different, yet almost exactly the same. This is the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition. So this one is exactly the Blade Advance, but in the mercury white option, which as you can see is a light silver. And instead of the usual GeForce RTX cards inside, we have Quadro, Quadro RTX 5000 Max-Q. So that's the top of the line Quadro card, and it is basically equivalent to the RTX 2080 Max-Q. What's the difference? We're going to find out now. So the difference is a lot of money. This is a $4,300 laptop. There is only one configuration and one color option is well specced out, but it's expensive. Now you can blame Razer and say, oh, boutique expensive, but really nice gaming laptops. But it's not just that. The Quadro cards are expensive and the top of the line Quadro RTX 5000 is particularly expensive. For example, if you look at the ThinkPad P53 from Lenovo, which is a mobile workstation with Quadro cards, it's a $1,300 upcharge if you want to go to that RTX 5000 Quadro card inside. So that's why it's so expensive. So what's the difference? Well, it's for folks who are doing 3D design, modeling, rendering, professional work, creator types, that sort of thing. The drivers are supposed to be more stable. The silicone on this is more thoroughly tested, so it's supposed to be able to run 24-7 without fail, that sort of stuff. And the drivers, the studio drivers, which admittedly you can actually use on a GeForce card these days too, are more stable and more optimized for the creator programs out there. That said, sometimes they actually do pretty well for gaming and sometimes a little bit better for gaming too. So that's the difference there. Otherwise, this isn't going to be a long review because you are looking exactly at the blade 15 in all other respects here. The 2020 model with Intel 10th generation CPU. So this is like the high spec version of the Blade 15 with GeForce graphics cards inside. You get an eight core i7 CPU Intel 10th gen. You have that Quadro card with NVIDIA Optimus so it's switchable with Intel UHD 630 graphics for when you're not doing demanding things and you need a little bit of battery life. We have two RAM slots as ever and it can go up to 64 gigs of RAM. This ships with 32 gigs of RAM, DDR4. You have one M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD slot and comes with a very fast one terabyte SSD. Just like the gaming laptop, and again, it's because it's the same physical laptop in all of the respects, you get the Razer Chroma Per Key RGB backlit keyboard, happily no more with that very visible PWM where the, you could see the keyboard kind of flashing at you at different brightness levels, so yay that. And it has a very large trackpad, it's Microsoft Precision. The keyboard is, again, just the same, so that means really short travel, not a lot of tactile feel, but a lot of today's thin and light laptops are running that way. You have Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 inside and Bluetooth 5.1. You have an 80 watt hour battery. You have Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C. One side is Thunderbolt 3, the other side is USB-C. And the usual USB-A ports, HDMI, a full-size UHS-2 SD card slot. So good stuff right there. And the usual Razer vapor chamber cooling with graphite thermal paste, which is pretty good stuff. Build quality, again, just like the regular Blade 15, beautiful unibody build. If you like light silver, you'll like this one, not available in black. Feels great, looks great, it certainly is the Windows equivalent of a MacBook Pro. So, who is this for? Obviously, if you just want to play games, you could spend about three grand or $3,200 instead and get the equivalent maxed out regular Blade 15 Advanced. The only difference would be 16 gigs of RAM instead of 32 on this one, but you can upgrade it yourself, so whatever. So it doesn't make any sense if you're just going to play games and you, nobody's going to spend this much extra money, $1,300, for the pleasure of having a Quadro card. It is for those of you who are also thinking about a Dell Precision, that Lenovo ThinkPad P53, which is still not yet updated to Intel 10th Gen CPUs, but that should be coming soon. Asus Pro Art workstations, you get the mobile workstations, you get the idea here. And even that 16 inch MacBook Pro with the optional $800 upgrade to the AMD Radeon Pro 5600M instead of the usual 5500M that you get, that'll still cost you about $4,000 if you configure a 16 inch MacBook Pro similarly to this. And you won't get as much GPU power for 3D rendering still with that Radeon card, and you'll get half the VRAM that has. 8 gigs of GDDR6. This one has 16 gigs. So, 
even still, say you work for a GE and you're designing microwave oven parts and you're using 3D rendering software, you know, your boss is probably going to say Razor, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to go buy a Lenovo or a Dell. I suspect that the target audience for this is 3D gaming studios largely because those are the folks who already are playing games. You want to test your creations, you want to look at the competition, and you want to be able to do your renders and all design and all that sort of thing. And I think gaming studios, EA, whatever, they're probably pretty open to blades, you know, especially if they like you a lot and they want to make you feel happy and stay working for them. In terms of performance and thermals, it's pretty much what you would expect. That They're not limiting the, the power limits too much on this here. And doing something like playing Battlefield 5 as a test, we saw the CPU go up to using 77 watts of power. It is nominally a 45 watt CPU, so go them. This is a max Q card, and when, again, playing Battlefield 5, it hit 103 watts of power consumption, so that's reasonable for a max Q card. Performance on this is good. I mean, again, if you see the battlefield footage on ultra 1080p settings, it's maxing, it's going over 100 frames per second. Thermals on this, it's a vapor chamber cooler. It helps. It's still going to get hot. The long gone are the days when blades had really noisy fans, though. So this doesn't make any hideous noise. You're not going to derange people in the workplace when you're doing your renders and that sort of thing, but it will make some noise if you're pushing it hard gaming laptop, it's hard, right? And the surface temperature is mostly above the keyboard, right below the display area where all gaming laptops and most laptops in general these days get hot, will get too hot to touch. But the rest of it, the keyboard is warm, the keyboard deck area where you rest your hands, not too hot, the battery's down there, so heat is reasonably well controlled, but it'll toast your hands, especially in the summertime. It's thin. It's going to happen. As always with Razer, you get the same Synapse software that you would on a regular Blade 15 for gamers, and the performance profiles do make a difference there. You have your balanced default one, and then you have custom. Custom basically is a simple slider for CPU and GPU. Put both of those to max performance when you're rendering or gaming, depending if you need both the CPU and the GPU to be... Mm -hmm. And it will make a difference. Let me tell you, in benchmarks and in games, I can see a difference. And in fact, we have a few benchmarks you can see on the regular default mode and on the high performance mode. And yeah, it doesn't generate that much more heat either. So good. So the display on this is a 4K OLED panel. It's the same one, again, that we've seen on the Blade 15. And that's not a bad thing. I find OLED a little brash and harsh on the eyes. I don't know. It's just uh, maybe it's the very high contrast on it or whatever. But it is factory calibrated, and they do a pretty good job of the calibration on this for color accuracy. And it is wide gamut. So you've got almost 100% Adobe RGB on here. In fact, 100% of P3 color gamut. Contrast is super duper high because, well, it's an OLED. OLED display. It's fine. It's made by Samsung, as are all OLED laptop displays. Battery life on this is an 80 watt hour battery. Again, just like the Blade 15 Advance, we do have Optimus. So if you're doing light tasks on the go, then Razer claims a six hours maximum run times on this. And if you were doing very light work, well, yeah, that's certainly possible, but probably most people are going to see more like four, four and a half hours. Not doing rendering or gaming on the go, but just doing your regular business and productivity tasks or streaming video, that sort of thing. Ships with the same 230 watt charger that most blades ship with these days that have the more powerful GPU options. So to get inside, it's just like the usual Blade 15. You've got Torx T5 screws. They're visible, and then it's easiest if you lift up from the rear. And there's some plastic clips, but nothing too challenging. And Metal bottom, nice tall rubber feet here to help give it a little ventilation there. So that's what the underside looks like. And this is heat pads for your SSD and other components over here. Here's our internal. Speaking of the SSD, here it is. It's a light on one terabyte SSD. The benchmarks are great on this, so I'm not going to say anything about that brand. No complaints. Two RAM slots right here. Again, it comes with 32 gigs of RAM, unlike the regular Blade 15 Advance that comes with 16. And obviously, it's upgradable. You can go up to 64 gigs. They're still doing that display cable routing over the vapor chamber cooler, but hey, you know, I guess it's okay. I have a Blade 15 older one, GTX 1070, several years old, and it hasn't melted that cable yet. We have the Intel Wi-Fi AX201 Wi-Fi 6 card here with Bluetooth 5.1. No room for a second SSD in this design here, ever since they increased the battery capacity to 80 watt hour, and of course that is the battery. The speakers are up firing, so the only thing you're going to see is the back side of the housings over here, and they fire up surrounding the keyboard 
where the grill area is much like a MacBook Pro. And again, vapor chamber cooling over here. They use graphite thermal paste, and I've repasted previous Blade 15 and Blade 15 Advanced, and honestly, unless you're switching to something like LM, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Their paste is pretty good. So that's the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Edition for 2020 with Intel 10th Gen CPUs and the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 Max-Q card. A very pricey spend, but it's a kind of niche product for those of you who know that you need this sort of product. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.